en el sur. ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Pero? Se llama Palanda. Palanda, sí, yo conozco Palanda. Ah, conozco. Wow, sí. eso, es, eso es raro. Hello guys, hi, good afternoon. Hi Marcos. Hey. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for, for being here today. Uh, thank you, Tarsicio. Thank, thank you, Joshua. And thank you, everyone, for, for being here today. Uh, today, we're going to be speaking with Tarsicio Granizo. He's the representative for WWF in Ecuador. And he's going to be giving us a, a perspective of what is happening in, in Ecuador and the environmental uh, yeah, field in Ecuador. So, Tarcisio, eh, I'm connecting a little bit late because I was having some troubles getting my, my connection with the internet, the home. So, could you please, if you start um, talking to us what is happening um, in the environmental uh, field here in Ecuador, especially with the oil and the last uh, news with the, um, we, we have some problems in Ecuador with some of the production out from Petro Amazonas. So, Tarcisio, welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. I am very pleased to be here. Uh, thank you for the invitation and thank all the people who is watching this small chat about uh, oil and, uh, and, uh, and Ecuador. I have a very brief pre presentation. I'm going to share my, my, my screen with you. Uh, let me see if I can do that. Can you see it? Okay, great. So uh, as far as I understand, we are gonna have some time for this presentation and then we can uh, have, we will have some time for, for some questions. So uh, this is a very, very brief summary of, of uh, uh, um, our point of view about oil in Ecuador. Uh, let's start with, uh, uh, talking about something that everybody knows, Ecuador is a mega diverse country, recognized all over the world. This, uh, the map you are watching there is the uh, map of ecosystems of Ecuador. There are uh, several main ecosystems in, in the country. All the gray areas are deforestated or transformed areas of the country. Uh, particularly, you can see it uh, here in the, in the coast, where the, most of the export crops are cultivated uh, since many years ago, since the, uh, uh, for, for years, uh, banana, coffee, livestock, etc. And you can see here in the, in the uh, uh, Amazon part of Ecuador, um, this gray area, it's precisely in the parts where the main production of oil were developed in, since the beginning of the, of the oil production in, in Ecuador. Um, but biodiversity is also species, and you can see the numbers we have here. And in the uh, 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 corner, in the right down, in the left down, you can see the number of species in the U.S. And you can compare uh, uh, the number of species in the U.S. with the number of species in Ecuador. We have, you can see, freshwater fish, almost a thousand species. Uh, meanwhile, in all North America, including Mexico, you have 800 species of fish, and so on. Uh, uh, that's why we, we say this is a bio mega diverse country, you know? Almost 20,000 species of, of plants uh, confirm that. But also, but also uh, biodiversity is genetic biodiversity. You can see there uh, the different types of, of corn in the left. Uh, uh, recently, it was a, a paper, an article in the, in, in the newspaper, I think it was in the El Comercio, um, emphasizing the fact that we have more than almost 20 uh, different vari varieties of, of corn. You can see also the varieties we have on, in uh, frijoles, in uh, beans, and potato down there. It's, uh, it's part of the, of, of the concept of biodiversity the three levels, ecosystem, species, and genetic biodiversity. But the, but the situation with oil is, uh, is that. You can see there, uh, both in the coast, here in the, in the southern, uh, south, south 
west of Ecuador and in the Amazon, all the concessions, all the, the, the blocks, the oil blocks that we have in Ecuador. Uh, those in yellow are the ones that have not been yet concessioned, but are ready for, for concession once the, the, the conditions uh, allow uh, do it. And here in the, in the northern part of Ecuador, in the central and northern part of the Ecuadorian Amazon, you can see all the uh, different blocks that are currently under exploitation. Here in this place is the famous ITT block, the block that it, it's inside of the Yasuni Protected uh, National Park, but there are other blocks within uh, the Yasuni National Park. These, 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 these are five or six blocks already working in the uh, Yasuni National Park. And you can see two areas where there is no concessions and there is no blocks, uh, oil blocks, is the, uh, this area in the Yasuni, Southern Yasuni National Park is the uh, intangible area that protects uh, these uh, isolated uh, peoples, indigenous peoples. And here in the Cuyabeno, you have also uh, um, uh, an intangible area. Everybody knows about the Yasuni, but nobody knows that Cuyabeno is also an intangible area. History of oil. The first oil concession started in as, 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 is as old as 1878. It was the first, uh, the first uh, concession uh, made in, in that year, but the operation started in 1917 in the coast, in Ancon, a place in the province of Santa Elena in the coast. And uh, the oil exploitation in the Amazon started in 1937. In the 70s and 80s uh, was the boom of the oil production in Ecuador with uh, uh, um, an increase, the total exports from 190 million in the 70, in 1970 to 2.5 billion in 1981. That's an increase of more than 13 times. Uh, and currently, the, um, the exports, the numbers and export is 19 uh, billion. But that, that shows that in the, in, the, in the period from 80s, uh, from 70 to 80s, the economy of Ecuador grew dramatically. Uh, but also grew the, the problems. The, the external debt uh, grew almost 22 times and uh, now is 32 billion uh, the debt that ecuador has with uh, 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 external uh, externals the economic impacts uh, well uh, everybody can say that oil brought to ecuador the modernization of the country and of course it did uh, but of course there are some things that never changed for instance the uh, production and consumption patterns. It, it didn't change. Um, and also the, uh, the process of accumulation tied to the exports of primary products of commodities was not altered. So the, the, the social and economic structure um, that we had before the oil boom uh, continue uh, uh, so far to, 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 to these days and neither the structure of the property, uh, this high concentration of, of richness in agricultural and industrial sectors and commercial and banking sectors, that didn't change and oil has a good impact in some, in some areas, but uh, increased the gaps between rich and poor in other uh, areas and, and geographies of the country. So uh, the, we can say that even with the, with the progress that we had with the oil, very important social aspects were not addressed appropriately. Uh, properly. Uh, this is, for instance, the, 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 um, these diagrams show the um, poverty and extreme poverty. Uh, in the left is the poverty chart, how it, it was reduced from the, uh, from, uh, uh, 2007 to uh, nowadays, uh, but it's still um, 
in the rural area, 40% uh, of the population is still poor. And in extremely poverty, we have uh, almost 18% of the population in the rural areas. So the oil uh, hasn't resolved this, uh, these problems at all. But the most important impacts of oil, it's the environmental impacts. And I am gonna, I am not going to, I don't want to, to, to have a, 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 um, only a negative, uh, to, to tell only a negative, the negative aspects of oil, because there were good aspects, but there has been some things that has been terrible for, for our environment. For instance, the, the issue of Chevron. Texaco Chevron was a, a company that operated in Ecuador in the 70s. It started in the, in the 60s, actually, to the 90s, and uh, caused what some experts believe is the worst ecological, ecological disaster in the history of, not only in, in Ecuador, but in the oil exploitation history. So almost 30,000 inhabitants of the Amazon regional region were contaminated and affected its lands and its rivers, um, the health of these people uh, because of the, the ways on how the, uh, these companies um, uh, manage the exploitation. Of course, it's not only the, um, the uh, responsibility of these companies. Of course, the government, the, the state of Ecuador had also a strong and a big responsibility in allowing this happening in the Amazon in those years. So uh, another problem not necessarily related to oil exploitation, let me tell, let me be very frank, is deforestation. We are still having um, from, from 90 to 2000, we had almost 90,000 hectares per year of deforestation. From 2000 to 2008, we had uh, 70,000, 77,000 hectares of deforestation. Now we are in the rank of 40 to, to 60,000 hectares of deforestation. Still uh, um, um, a large, a big rate of, of deforestation in the country. You can see, as, uh, as we mentioned in the beginning, the areas of the coast were deforestated many years ago, not is, this is not a deforestation related to oil. Of course, it's more related to uh, export crops like and commodities like banana, soybean, um, uh, livestock, and others. You can see here in the in interandian valleys, uh, in the in the Andes, in the interandian valleys, the deforestation that comes from the Inca period, even even before the the the, the arrival of the Europeans we already had this deforestation because um, indigenous peoples, uh, Incas and pre-Incas uh, used to, to, to uh, they changed the, um, the way, they, they started to, to, make, to, to, to have agriculture in the inter-Andean valleys. And you have the most recent uh, deforestation in the Northern uh, Amazon related to oil because oil brings um, roads, and roads brings colonization. That's why oil is not directly responsible of, of the deforestation, but it's indirectly uh, responsible of that. And here in the in this part, in the lower part of the Cordillera de los Andes, in um, in the center and the south of, of the Amazon, you can you you can see recent deforestation due to um, livestock and agriculture, but mainly livestock. Uh, and that's why we have these areas uh, here. And of course, you can see still some huge areas of our um, Amazon still in good shape, but always we will have this threat of oil exploitation in this uh, part in the southeast of, of the Amazon uh, waiting for it to be uh, exploited. Other impacts environmental impacts related to, to oil. Burned gas in the lighters of oil wells, you can see when you go to the Amazon and you are navigating in the, in the Napo River, you will see lots of, of these uh, lighters 
all over the the river down 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 there and 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 that's and that's gas that it's being burned uh, uh it's calculated that it's 30 million kilos per day uh the new the new techniques of uh, of exploitation particularly those in the itt i'm sorry those i i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry oops let me go back sorry about that it's the um enthusiasm um this uh this, this 30 million kilos per day it's it's gas that it's 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 uh, we lost we lose uh, uh but i i was mentioning that the new uh, new techniques in in oil exploitation avoid this kind of of lighters and you can see it in the itt exploitation uh um in and in other in other oil fields currently happening the other problem oil spills an average of almost eight oil spills per month uh, affects the the amazon those oil spills can be very small or very large that like the one that we had a few weeks ago when the uh, the oil pipe uh, broke in the uh, in the area of the cascada de san rafael and we have others that are very small but are all also registered and of course those uh, oil spills affect uh, waters affect soils affect the human health we already mentioned the the uh, deforestation in the amazon the colonization in and another uh, terrible impact uh, is a social impact particularly with some uh, uh, human groups like the one with the waorani uh, indigenous peoples that was impacted by by the um, oil exploitation the uh, waorani uh, is the is the is the indigenous people that had the most recently contact with the uh, non-indigenous uh, and that contact was particularly with oil companies and and was a very dramatic and shocking contact um, and and we can see the effects of that in the levels of organization and the levels of of uh, acculturization of the indigenous uh, Waurani people. And the other thing is that even uh, having the, the most important product for export of Ecuador uh, in these years that it's oil, the Amazon is still the poorest region of Ecuador, having been the, the origin of the, of the oil that has uh, brought, brought the wealth to the country but the amazon is still abandoned and poor what are the alternatives of course uh there are some uh i have, i i don't want to say that we need to avoid or to stop the oil production this is a country that needs oil for for its development but things needs to be done well done uh, good in good shape not having this environmental nor the social impacts that the oil exploitation have historically had in the in the country uh, one of the most uh, interesting alternatives were the yasuni itt initiative i don't know if you are familiar with that but the the um, the, um, the initiative was to the, the the intention of the initiative it was an initiative related to climate change and the idea was to keep the oil underground in the uh, in the itt block the one that i showed in the at the beginning in exchange of a compensation from from rich countries um, uh, of certain amount of money for not uh, to exploit but, but, uh, to not exploit the uh, the oil that it's underground in the ITT the uh, initiative didn't work for many reasons that we can discuss uh, uh, someday but uh, it was a very good and interesting uh, proposal in fact uh, the mechanism is one of the mechanisms for uh, for the uh, that was adopted for the uh, um, convention on climate change as one of the possible mechanisms for mitigation of of uh, um, climate change we need to discuss the model of development that the, this country needs what's going to be the model of development for ecuador in the long term are we still do we need to to continue depending on oil and mining or other uh, extractives for for our development or we need to gradually change to another model of development maybe one 
uh, related or more um, that emphasize more things like bioeconomy, for instance, that it's something that we have been discussing for a, for, uh, for a long time. Uh, we need to discuss what is the energy matrix of the country. How can we decarbonize the economy of the country as Costa Rica did? Uh, we need to, to implement a good land use zoning. And, and, and uh, uh, what, that means what needs to be done where? Where to, to do mining? Where is not possible to do mining? Where to do oil? Where is not possible to do uh, uh, oil? And, and so on. Implementation of good practices. There are, I, I, I must recognize that there are good practices in mining and in oil production. As I mentioned, the ITT is a good example of, of good uh, practices, environmental and social practices. And, and, and I, I, I hope the, um, the, these practices can be replicated in the, if, if there are new um, uh, oil projects in the country, as well as mining. Mining is something that we can discuss in another forum, uh, but uh, I, can, uh, I can mention uh, some good experiences on, on, on responsible mining in Ecuador, and, and that's another thing that needs to be replicated. Of course, uh, the, the law uh, obligates the um, oil companies to mitigate, restore, and compensate, uh, and we need to, to, to have the, uh, the um, instruments and mechanisms to do that. To do that. Uh, among other things, it's to enforce and strengthen the Ministry of Environment that has been weakened in the last uh, uh, years. And there's another uh, very interesting proposal is the, the um, Sociobosque initiative. Sociobosque is a governmental initiative that uh, uh, it's, it's some sort of a payment for environmental services uh, model scheme uh, in which the, the government pays uh, an X number of, of dollars per hectare uh, that it's not uh, cut down. And uh, almost 1.6 million hectares are in the country are under this mechanism that has been uh, uh, proven very effective. So uh, I have uh, some uh, um, some uh, slides on, on WWF in Ecuador. I, I'm going to be very, very quick on that. Uh, just for you to know, we started in the 60s in Ecuador, one of the first countries where, where WWF started to work in. Uh, particularly in the Galapagos Islands. Now we have a, a, an office in Quito and a small office in Guayaquil with presence in Galapagos and Manta. Around 30 people is our staff uh, with around 25 projects uh, under execution and 20 projects waiting for, for donors and, and contributors uh, in, in our pipeline. And that's basically what I wanted to, to, to tell you. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Now, I, I, I would like to, to invite uh, our, our moderator to, to take the, the floor. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Tarsicio. Um, so I have, a, I have a question for you. Like, how do you see the projection um, of Ecuador on the oil industry? Uh, is it going to be growing uh, knowing that 423,000 barrels are produced by Petro Amazonas, which represents 80% of the total production of the country. But with the pipe that recently uh, broke because of the, um, well, of the actions of the nature, but where, where do you see the uh, oil business going in the next few years? Well, Ecuador is a very marginal producer of, of oil in the, in the global context. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and people think that we depend a lot, uh, I mean, that a lot of, uh, a, a, a large amount of our economy depends on oil. And it's not true. Okay. It has been uh, reducing the, the, uh, the, uh, the percentage of, of, of the oil income to the uh, general budget of the, of the, of the state. Um, and I think it's my personal opinion that uh, the, um, 
the fluctuation of the of the oil prices first, the tremendous environmental impacts that it it has, the social impacts that it has, it doesn't work for a country like Ecuador to continue thinking in this economy based in the extraction of, of uh, non-renewables. I think we need to change our chip. We need to change our model of development in the, in the country. That's my personal opinion, but that needs to be done gradually because we cannot, uh, from one day to the other, uh, stop oil, oil production, but needs to, we need to sit all the, all, the, all the sectors, social, economic, uh, political sectors, and discuss the model of development that we need and we want for this country. Okay, all right. When I was preparing for this, this event, I was reading, I was researching some of the, of the um, because Petro Amazonas, as I said before, is one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, oil producer in the country. So they have some programs where they were investing $43 million in the community. They just recently uh, invested $3.9 million in another community. So um, in the short term, uh, because you are you're close to these communities as well, uh, in the short term, you can see something that uh, those contributions help to the to the community depends okay. depends on the organization of the community that's very mm -hmm. important if you go to a community uh, uh, that has a, a life plan the, the life plan is what they call their development plan of the community if they have their territories if they have if they have identified their needs and if they have a good governance, that money helps because they can do whatever they need, they decide to, to do with that money. But if you go to the Waurani people, for instance, where uh, you have a community, communities with no governance at all, with uh, uh, tremendous problems of alcoholism, uh, with tremendous problems of acculturization, you know, the, the destruction of the cultures, money is not a good, the best uh, uh, um, strategy to help them. They need other things uh, beyond money. Okay, and at the beginning you were mentioning about the about the diversity of Ecuador. Also, um, how many types of corn we have here? Uh, that's that's amazing because. For example, Mexico, if we go to Mexico, they have those tortillas. But in Ecuador, we have a, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk more like uh, about the dishes in Ecuador. In, in, in Ecuador, we have like um, Motepillo, in Cuenca. We have different uh, dishes here in Ecuador. So I know this is more like a, a light question, but uh, uh, in, in terms of the dishes, how, how do you see that in, in, in Ecuador? Like an asset, it's 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 a it's a tremendous uh, genetic di diversity, but we are losing it because um, people in the cities, urban people, doesn't know, don't know the uh, the variety of 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 things we have. For instance, we, if if we go to the super maxi, we only find one type of melioco. I don't know if everybody knows melioco is a, a, a like a potato, and there's more than fifteen different varieties of melioco. And you know who, who knows that? The indigenous communities. Potato, we only know papachola, but we have more than 50 varieties, different varieties of potato. And the, and the indigenous peoples know what type of potato they have to use for, diff, for the different dishes, for the different uh, recipes. Um, the same of yuca. Yuca, there's not only one yuca. There are several uh, 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 varieties of yuca and so on. We can, you name it, we, we can, we, and, and as, as you mentioned, corn. You have kangil, you have motte, you have uh, uh, the, the corn that you give to the, to the chickens, and, and you name it. But we are losing that because we, are, we, are, we tend to be standardized in, in a product that is more, more best known or best uh, or had uh, had the best price and that's it and we are losing this uh, this diversity which which yeah. is a cultural diversity as well 
Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I think Ecuador is very rich uh, in terms of food and fresh food. So it is something that we need to rescue somehow. Um, having organizations like yours, uh, I think it will have a great impact on this. And I think we have another question. Uh, Joshua, if you can make it. Yes, absolutely. The question is, thinking about uh, oil not being, we, we can't eliminate it totally, but it's still not the biggest uh, push forward, not great economically or environmentally. On the coast, number two, of course, is the export of bananas. Uh, very close, and there's shrimp, and there's tourism, which are all higher level uh, things that are promoting Ecuador's economy. What other possibilities exist uh, besides, you know, what we have already on the table to move forward? Absolutely. Um, there, this this uh, question has two answers. The first one is the need of 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 making those commodities, like the, the current, the, the, the commodities that we have now, banana, shrimp, and so on, um, cultivated with, with good environmental practices. And that's what we are doing in, in WWF with banana, shrimp, tuna, the production of tuna, and, 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 and fisheries. But the other is to open new, new, new products. Look, we are a mega diverse country. We have, um, but we only know 5% of, of that biodiversity. And we, for instance, are, are, are implementing some projects with new products that has, or can, can have some uh, good markets in Europe and in, and in the US. For instance, vanilla. We are cultivating with some local communities in the Amazon, um, vanilla under forest. They don't, they don't need to cut the forest to, to, to have the vanilla. And vanilla has good good prices in the in the international markets. That's one. Uh, other examples: um, oils from Amazon plants. There are a, a, a local community in the uh, in in your in the no in the province of Morona. Yeah, Chanquap. Uh, uh, they, they this is a um, uh, an NGO. Uh, it's a, an association of of, of producers that are uh, um, making uh, oil for essential oils for oils for soaps and shampoos and they are exporting it uh, we want for instance uh, the um, the peel of the coconut uh, it can be uh, uh, some communities in esmeraldas are are, uh, are are processing it for uh, for for the flower plantations to put in there as beds for flower plantations. We, when, when I was in the Ministry of Environment, we identify like 450 different uh, uh, bioemprendimientos. How can I say you bioemprendimientos? Um, small ideas. Bio enterprise? Yeah, a small enterprise. Some of them are, were very, very limited, very focal, very local. Some are, were very experimental. But 450 different products that uh, people is already doing, maybe for their neighbors, maybe for uh, a very small markets. The idea of, of, of passing it to international markets, uh, um, investing in, in innovation, in technology, Investing in in uh, in uh, in, uh, in markets uh, identification identification of international markets with uh, with good uh, uh, investments for from from the private or public banks and so on that's what we need and and I have I am I'm sure that very easily we can at least um, uh, mm, have the very same uh, incomes or earns that the oil gives us as, as, as an oil exporter. Okay, thank you. Ex very nice answer. There's another question from uh, Dolores Graham. She says, Ecuador recently accepted a large monetary loan from China, apparently to be repo repaid with oil. Will this promote more oil drilling and production in the Amazon rather than less? 
Yeah, unfortunately, yes. Probably it it will uh, mean that uh, we need to pay the, the debt <laughs> in some way. Uh, and we have had some some problems with the with the Chinese companies. Um, I remember when I was in the ministry, we we were able to stop the uh, Mirador, which is a a copper mine, the, the largest mine in Ecuador and the largest investment, Chinese investment in Ecuador is Mirador. Uh, and because of uh, some uh, problems with environmental measures that they didn't take, uh, we stopped it. And we were able to stop it because we, we had the, uh, the political support from the president and from the Ministry of, of Mining. But that can, can change and they actually changed. And, 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 and the, the issue is that we have now a very weak Ministry of Environment, Minister of Environment, Ministry of Environment, uh, a very weak uh, state in general. Uh, and I'm afraid that the, um, the possibility of control these activities from China or from any other investor will be more difficult in the future. And particularly now, when, when the country is thinking in how to recover, how to, to do this recovery, economic recovery after the COVID, um, how is gonna be, how is, one, how is gonna happen? It's gonna happen against nature, it's gonna happen destroying whatever they want to destroy, or it's gonna happen thinking in, a, in another model of development. That's something that uh, uh, we are concerned of. Okay, um, I just have a, we have another quick question, but uh, it, I just would like to thank you, Joshua, because he had a, an emergency meeting uh, with his full-time job, uh, because Joshua, he basically, he volunteers his, his, thank his you. job with us for, for this. So thank you so much, Joshua. Okay, all right. Uh, so, Tarsicia, let me just continue. Uh, I would like to read the next question, what, what it, which is, what about hemp or for raw material export and locally manufacturing? Uh, in the last uh, last week, we had a we have a webinar. We had a webinar where we spoke about uh, is cannabis the new business in Ecuador, which basically in mid-June, which we already are, uh, we're going to have the regulations to, to grow this, but what will be your perspective for, for him uh, as, and use it for, as a raw material to export? I Local think that's, that's a good alternative as, as many others. Uh, I think we need to be creative and innovative in the things that we uh, need to, to development in order to diversify. That's something that that's very important the diversification of our income, of, of, of our sources of income. Uh, and the diversification is, is an issue that needs to be very seriously addressed. Now you can see the oil, uh, the oil prices dropped dramatically in a few weeks ago. Uh, apparently the, the price has recovery, partially recovery now, but you can see the, uh, the dependence of the Galapagos inhabitants to the tourism. 70% of the Galapagos uh, population lives from tourism. Now tourism is practically zero. Mm -hmm. So what's gonna happen there? So the diversification, it's, it's always a good strategy. And of course, uh, Cañamo, how is, uh, hemp? Yeah, hemp? Hemp is one of the, uh, of the interesting products. I, I think it could be a very interesting uh, issue if we can do it with the hemp. But there, there are many others. Uh, hemp is imported from, from outside, but there's, there are other products that could be found in the, in the Amazon that can perfectly be used as, as, as al economic alternatives for the country. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tarcicio. So uh, we're almost 45 minutes now, and I would like to ask you, just some final final questions for our audience. Uh, keep in mind they are uh, expats, uh, citizens from North America, uh, living here in Ecuador. Uh, some some of them they are part time. Some of them they are full time. 
And something else that I would like to ask you, it is that we're going to our attendees is that we're going to be sending you a, uh, a, um, a survey at the end, uh, just to qualify what is the content, what is the quality of the content of this. And also we would like to have from you some suggestions for our next uh, topics. Uh, right now, everything is changing so fast that, uh, for example, speaking about coming back to Ecuador or speaking about investment or, or residency visas, with which normally this is our main business, uh, it is hard to predict right now, but uh, we try to keep up uh, with the content for, for these webinars. So please uh, send us your comments on the survey that you are very soon to receive. So. Tarsicio, if you have some final words for, for our attendees. No, no, no. Thank you very much for the invitation. I am very glad to have these numbers of, of uh, US people living in Ecuador. I didn't know that, that number. Uh, uh, I assume most, uh, most of them are, are living in, in Cuenca. I, I have learned that uh, many people like Cuenca. I like Cuenca as well. Uh, many others, I, I know that may, uh, there are a, a good number of of American citizens in um, uh, here in the north on Dacen Los Cueros, uh, Cotacachi, yeah. Cotacachi, and some other. I, I'm uh, always welcome and and happy to have you here. And 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 and, and I'm WWF in Ecuador. It's uh, it's keen to 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 show you whenever you want the Thank the you. projects that we are developing and where how and, and we will be happy to, to show it too. Thank you so much because that's very important because some of our clients when they contact us here they always want to contribute something with, with the Ecuadorian society they want to get involved with something so it will be good to have your, your contact information we're going to be posting in how to get in contact with WWF and see if anyone is interested in being a volunteer with you I know you will have a process to accept a person but it, it will be something I mean great if we some of the attendees can get uh, involved with one of your projects which that they really, are very very interesting really so great. thank you so much everyone um, this was great it was so uh, a lot of information from the environmental perspective and this was a new topic for our webinars for expats in Ecuador so thank you so much and have a nice afternoon take thank care you very much see you soon Bye -bye.